So our message today is about Thanksgiving. Uh, and I'd like to start out by, what are we thankful for? And ask you to kind of share some of the things that you're thankful for. Myself, I'm thankful that we have another day. That God has blessed us with a very fruitful garden this year. That's the height of our summer, is what we produced, what was allowed to produce out of our garden. Somebody else want to share? Peace in our hearts. Peace, Peace in our in hearts. Our hearts. Amen. And fellowship. And fellowship. Where would we be without the fellowship? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So our friend Ron was I don't think he was in there even a day. And he had found witness to people and found Christians mm. to fellowship with. Mm. Because they'd been in that apartment. They couldn't get out of the apartment to go have fellowship with anybody. Mm-hmm. They were just stuck there. Mm-hmm. You know, and they didn't get visitors. And uh, that morning at breakfast he was sitting at a table with five other Christians. Yeah. <laughs> First day. Amen. First morning. God is good. Yep. So as a, as part of the message, I decided to look up verses with thanksgiving in them. If I can remember what one I'm supposed to find. So in Psalms 26, 7, it reads that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. And so, Marion. This says, um, God created food, foods to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Amen. Well, <clears throat> sacrifice thanks, thank offerings to God Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with the Psalms. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. 21, it Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. So what, what does it mean to give thanks? How does it make you feel when you're thanking something, someone special for something they've done for you? Or what God has done for you? The message this morning comes from three different sections of Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
Colossians 2, 6 through 7, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. And then Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And of course, I entitled it, Happy Thanksgiving. As we are approaching the Thanksgiving celebration, I thought we could talk about what we are thankful for. What are you? thankful for. As you heard, we're probably thankful for quite a few things, even those that we didn't mention. In 1 Thessalonians we are told that we should rejoice always, no matter what we are going through, what we are facing, and no matter what is happening in our lives. We are to pray without ceasing. In other words, pray and do not stop praying in everything given thanks. This means that we should never stop praying. We need to realize that no matter what we are praying for, God is always hearing us and answering our prayers. I often think of what someone had said with regards to God's answering prayers. I was told this. First, we are to understand that he never says no. However, he does say yes, and in some instances says grow. Then he says go. That's the answer to I like to think of it as, okay, wait, grow, and then go. Either way, we can know that he hears our prayers and will answer them when he knows we are ready to receive them. Think about that. When you pray for something to happen or something to get taken care of. We kind of want it right now, don't we? We kind of want things to happen. I mean, if it don't happen today, we're going to be troubled about it until something comes to fruition. But he says, in my time. And we have to understand that. The thing we need to understand in all of this is that we are to thank him for all that he is doing and for what he is about to do for us. Some people think that we should just ask him in prayer and let it set until you get an answer and then thank him. Were you really expecting an answer from that prayer if you didn't thank him already? This is not a biblical thought, but it does make sense to me to say thank you for what you are going to do for me. Before we become a believer in Christ Jesus, our Savior, we were stumbling people, stumbling and fighting a war within and without. 
we came to feel like there just has to be something better for us in this life. I think of the time when I was fighting to stop my drinking problem. I went with Coral Sea Crusaders to uh, a church event. Every Wednesday night they would go out in churches in California and some of them would give a testimony and then we'd sing in the choir for, with them, with their, their church choir. And one of us would go forward and make a test, give a testimony. The one gentleman said something that struck me and that's when I came forward and accepted Jesus Christ. Because I was tired of what I was dealing with. I couldn't handle it anymore. And it took me a, real, a long time to realize that it wasn't over yet. Up until 38 years ago. And then I realized my life was about done. So I got back on my feet quit drinking and think here I am today. I had no idea that I was coming to this position at that time. I had no intention. But I'm thankful for that God saved me out of all those troubles I've been in and brought me here today. In January, it would be 13 years ago that he called me to this place. And I thank him for it. So we're always looking for something better in our lives. And I can promise you this. When we take that leap of faith and sought forgiveness for our sins and called on the Lord Jesus Christ to help us walk through what we were in and out of it, our lives changed. That is where Jesus came and took us, took up residence in us. When we said, I've had enough. I need something different. Lord, help me. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. We have so much. To be thankful for. Even you who may be watching this video or listening to me now. You have more than you can imagine to be thankful for because if you're listening to this, God gave you another day, another chance to accept Him as your own personal Savior. We can be thankful that He heard our cries and lifted us up out of the sinful nature He has found us in. That we now have found eternal life with him just by saying, Lord, I believe in you. In the book of Philippians, we are reminded that we are should rejoice in the Lord always and emphasizing to rejoice, saying it a second time. Verse 4. In verse 5, we who are gentle of heart and deeds are reminded to let this be known to men 
Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Don't let people get you down because you are kind to them. Don't get let it get under your skin that they're going to poke fun of you. We've been warned that as believers in Jesus Christ, we will face these trials. It's how we handle them that we say, I'm okay because I'm with Jesus. You can say what you want, but unless you know Jesus, you're not going to help or hurt me. The commentary on these verses say this. Ultimately, joy comes from Christ dwelling within us. Christ will come again. And at his second coming, we will fully realize this ultimate joy. He who lives within us will fulfill his final purpose for us. How strange that a man in prison could tell a church to rejoice. But Paul's attitude teaches us an important lesson. Our outward circumstances do not need to dictate our inner attitudes. Our outward circumstances do not need, I'm going to repeat it, to dictate our inner attitudes. Paul was full of joy because he knew that no matter what happened to him, Jesus was with him. Several times in this letter, Paul urges the Philippians to be joyful, probably because they needed to hear this. It's easy to get discouraged about unpleasant circumstances or to what unimportant events to seriously. If you haven't been joyful lately, let the Holy Spirit remind you that true joy is found in the Lord and the promise of his second coming. We have something to look forward to. And we should be joyful about that. We should be happy that we have a place to go. Those of you who do not believe in him, I'm sorry, but you don't have everlasting life to go to. No, I'm not making judgment. I'm telling you what the Bible says. We are to be considerate, reasonable, fair-minded, and charitable to those outside the church, not just to fellow believers. This means we are not to seek revenge against those who treat us unfairly, nor are we to be overly vocal or demanding about our personal rights. We have rights, yes we do. But so do they. And we're to treat them the same way we want to be treated. When we get anxious about things that are going on in today's world, we are doing ourselves, are we doing ourselves a favor? Truthfully, what good does it do for us when we do it? Do we know the things we can do to improve the situation? And if so, did we do anything about it? We continue to complain about it, but what did we do? I think of our government and how we don't like what they're doing. Yes, we're believers. And we have rights to speak up. If we don't like something they're doing, have we written a letter to our Congress representative? Have we done anything to help reduce our struggle with what they're doing? Paul tells us in verses 6 through 7, be anxious for nothing. 
So how can we reduce that anxiousness that we get? Number one, if we realize that we are anxious over something and we've not said anything to clear our minds with this, have we done ourselves a service or a disservice? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, this is scripture telling us what we can do, but if we're not doing it, have we done ourselves a service or disservice? If we know what we need to tell our representative in government of our concerns, have we made a change or attempted to make that change? Being former mayor, I can understand some people really do voice some concerns. And it's hard to respond as a representative of the community or a leader of the community. But if you don't listen to them, and if I don't hear those complaints, have they done this community a service? So don't be anxious. Share the problem. Share your concern. And Paul is saying, with thanksgiving, let your request be then known to who? God. And he will guide us. What Paul is saying is that if we would turn our concerns over to the Lord Jesus Christ with prayer and supplication, which means asking in humbleness of heart for the Lord to help you with the, this concern, that is weighing on your heart. I would recommend that if it is a heavy thing on your heart that you ask yourself, what is it that is making me feel this way? What's churning? Like putting that into a meat grinder and just watching it crank up and just irritate. What is it? What can I do about it? These are the kinds of things that the Lord can help you to resolve and find peace. This is why Paul states, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now think about this statement. We, it'll be beyond, when, when you pray to God for something and it's sincere. And all of a sudden that prayer gets answered. And you're not sure all the intricate parts of how it come to pass. Because God does things that we will never fully understand. All of a sudden it becomes plain. And he says, beyond surpasses our understanding. We cannot fathom sometimes how things come to light. And as I shared this morning, when I f fell from the top of the barn down to the concrete floor, I still don't understand how my path came through that because it knocked the wind completely out of me. I got to my feet gasping for air. I have no explanation. I don't remember any touching, lifting me up. I just remember I hurt. That I do remember. But I gasped for air and ran out of the barn looking for my mom. How do you make sense of that? 
I only know that if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. What more could you ask for? If it wasn't for God, we all have some kind of an experience that we could say, if it wasn't for Him, I wouldn't be here to talk to you. Every one of us has been through something. The bottom line is this. We're coming up on Thanksgiving Day. What are we thankful for? Give thanks no matter what is going on in your world today. Number two, get peace that is beyond all understanding from the Lord. Whatever is bugging you today, let it go. Give it over to God and say, walk with me, Lord. Number three, do you do what you can in all circumstances and when you cannot seek God's wisdom and, wisdom and understanding? In other words, try to understand what the circumstance is and if you can't do it, ask God. Ask God. He always hears us. And I know some of you might say, oh, I've asked this prayer over and over and I'm getting nowhere. And in some cases, they might even give up and say there is no God. But have you given Him a chance? Have you said, okay, I'll wait? That might be a long wait sometimes. But keep in mind, it is in His time. Four seventy two. Please show me every day as your team. 